Hello, on this video, I want to show you how to read and write to a CSV file, a comma separated value file. And also, I want to show you how to count the rows and the columns of a CVS file. For that, let's look at some code. I want to put the shebang line here, plus some comments. And also, you need to import the CSV module. That's going to allow us to write to the CSV file. So the goal here is for us to end up with something like this. A comma separate value file. And the file has a header here. Then it has some values in columns and also in rows. So in order for us to write this kind of a structure, we're going to use a list. But it cannot be a single list. It has to be a two-dimensional list so we can have rows and columns at the same time. So if I open the same file using Notepad, then I want to end up with something like this. So let's continue writing the code here. The first thing I want to do is to create the two-dimensional list. So here I'm creating a two-dimensional list. Every time I create a two-dimensional list, I like to put every row on a different line of code. If you want to, you can actually put this in one line, but I like to spread in multiple lines so it's easier for me to see and understand what I'm doing. So each line here would be equivalent of one row in our file. And once I have this two-dimensional list here, all I have to do now is to write to the file. And here I'm opening the file, then I create a writer, and then with the writer, I just write the pet list to the file. So I'm going to run this program now. And then I'm going to go open the folder of where this file is located. And I have my file here, my CSV file. If I open with Excel, then I have my columns and my rows. And if I open with Notepad, I have the same thing. But this time I have the comma separating the values. Now, we already created this file. Now I'm going to read from the file. So now here, I'm going to read from the file. So next, we're going to read from the CSV file. But before that, I'm going to get the column and the row count. We do not need to get the count to read the file. But just for teaching purpose, I'm going to show you how to get the column count and the row count. So instead of using the with statement, I'm going to use differently right here. I'm just going to open the file directly. You can, if you want to, use the same format that it was before here. I'm just showing a different format. So the first step is to open the file. And I'm opening with the R for read. Then I create a reader. And with the reader, I get one line or one row of the file, and then I use the len function to get me the length of the first row. And then the length of the first row, I'm going to assign to a variable called columns count. And now I just need to get the row count. 
To get the row count, we have two options right here. One is to, and this is a typo by the way, this is plus one. So one option is for us to add one here and then just get the sum of every row in the file or we can reset the file to the beginning of the file. So I know it's a little complicated here, so let me open the file so I can better explain this. So here in the Excel file, on line 27, when I use the function next on the reader, I am reading the first row of my CSV file. And then I get the length, so this is great. But the next time I go back to the file, then the file, the reader, is not on row 1 anymore. The reader is now on row 2. So if I just continue running this, the row count is going to have the number of rows that are after the first row. So in this case here, the row count is going to have only three rows, when in reality, we have four rows in total. And that's because line 27 already read the first row of my file. There are two ways for us to solve this problem of inaccuracy of one. The first is you just add one here, and that will account for the row that you just read in the past. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can reset your file back to the beginning, and then you do not need to add one here. And finally, I'm going to print the values of columns and row. So I'm going to run this program. Oh, I need to close the file. I'm going to close the file. And then I'm going to run again. And here I have, so four columns and four rows. And if I go open the file, then I do have one, two, three, four columns and one, two, three, four rows. So remember, you either use the seek here or the other way is to just add one here and you get the same value. I prefer to add one because it seems for me it's a little faster. So if I run this program again, I get four and four again. So again, we do not need to know the row count and the column count of the file, but I'm just showing you here for teaching purpose. So I'm going to leave this code here for now, and then I'm going to continue reading the file. But for now, cut. Now, since I already run the iterator over the entire file, I must reset this. I must reset this so I can get the reader back to the beginning of the file. So the file.seek gets the iterator at the beginning of the file again. And the reason I'm doing this is because now I'm going to start actually reading the contents of the file on display here. If you had not done any of this code here, which is getting the column and the row, then you would not need to reset the file. And now here, I can finally start reading the file. And now I can write the code to actually loop through the file and get the values. And now I'm going to run this code. And here I have the values from the file together with the columns and rows that I got in the past. And note that once I execute the reader, it comes back in a row. And each value from the file has an index. So index 0, 1, 2, and 3. 
and that's because I have four columns on my file. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.